I often get sick weeks. So I think that I had a couple came to see me because their son was on drugs and I was in contact with people in recovery from addiction. And I said to the couple, I say to the wife, when she's pregnant, she fans out, what's her first thought? Is it joy or, oh dear, how are we going to manage? Joy. And when she tells her husband, what's his first thought? Is it joy or, oh dear, how are we going to manage? And when I said this to the wife, is it joy or how are we going to manage? And she says, she smiles and says, yes, it was joy. When she tells her husband, he said, no, it wasn't. And their son is on drugs because the father has no relationship with the son. Seems simple as that. Addiction of any type I maintain is lack of love. And most, most problems in all of us, I think, come down to lack of love somewhere in our early life. Now, when things happen to us as an adult, I've, in my experience, the reason for it happening is because something happened early on in our life. Give you an example. This witness, some three or four years ago, it's in, the, in my book, came to see me. I had bandages on my legs every, once a week. And she came to read news of bandages. And a new one came, I hadn't seen before, Claire. And she said that she and her husband were very tired because since Christmas Day until March, when I was a senior, her six-year-old boy was having nightmares every night. And they were very tired. So I didn't even know she was a Christian. I said to her, you and your husband, when he's asleep, sit by him, hand on head, shoulder, arm, whatever. Sit by him with your help, someone, and you say one sentence, Lord, we need some healing. I also said to her, my, my first thought is, something happened to him early on in life. She came back the next week. He had only had two nightmares, nothing like the previous ones. After the first week, no more nightmares. The fifth week, she said, what he didn't know, you don't know, when he was two years old, I was washing the car and he got lost. Now, I just guess, I do a lot of guessing. I guess he got lost, he was frightened. Now, why was Nightmare Christmas Day until March. Because on Christmas Day, he had seen the news on television of Joanna Yates. Do you know the name? Joanna Yates, the landscape architect who was kidnapped and murdered in Brazil. And she was found on Christmas Day. He saw the news. I my guess, he triggered off something that happened to him at two years old. Okay. Prayer. No more nightmares. Okay. So, see, things happen in the womb. Things can go wrong in the womb. The, the baby in the womb hears everything. Don't ask me how, I don't know. He just hears everything. And if the baby, if there's something wrong between the parents, something uh, negative, the baby will feel it. If the baby knows it's going to be lacking in love, it will want to be born. born. And sometimes a late, a late birth is because of not wanting to be born. I don't know. All sorts of reasons. All sorts of things can happen. So be careful about saying things like they just be mentioned now. Okay, where are we? Um, who's next? Margie. You ready? We're on to Freemasonry. Freemasonry comes under the above, phase 134. Number one, you will remember that the people of Israel were moving in fulfillment of God's 
God's plan for them. Number two, they were supernaturally guided day and night by a cloud and a pillar of fire. This corresponds to the guidance of the Holy Spirit to the New Testament believers. Romans 8.14 For all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. Number three, they were a nation under discipline with God-appointed leaders and God-given laws. Number four, their relationships were carefully ordered according to a divine pattern. Okay. Oh, Peter, explain to me why is it called Freemasonry with these four things? Anybody have any idea? All I know is that Freemasonry is wrong. There's something sinister about Freemasonry. Um, sometimes I pray against I, okay I, I say to people who've got problems any, any connection in your family yourself or other people your extended family any connection with the occult dangerous Freemasonry I have added to those two Reiki as well. But Freemasonry and the occult are very dangerous. They cling like an octopus with um, stickers. And they're difficult to get rid of, except through prayer. So be careful. If you have anybody in the family, uncle, auntie, relation, who's connected with the occult, be careful, get someone to pray with you. Now, I have a short prayer, which I say in the middle of a deliverance prayer. And this is the prayer I say, I get the people to say it with me. Lord Jesus Christ, I acknowledge you as my God and Saviour, and I abjure, A-B-J-U-R-E, I abjure means to swear against, I abjure any connection with the occult, or Freemasonry. And in your precious name, Jesus, I ask you to set me free from these two things. And I thank you and praise you for setting me free. So you can, you can free yourself, which you ought to do if you think anybody in your family is connected with Freemasonry or the occult. It's a prayer of deliverance, which you can say yourself. Okay. Um, now, have you ever heard the expression soulish talk? It means what it says here. James me 14 to 15. But if you have bitter envy and self seeking in your hearts and lie against the truth, this wisdom does not descend from above, but is earthly, sensual, demonic. One of the sins that Christians fall into most easily is gossip, which is defined as casual and idle chatter, conversation involving malicious chatter or rumors about others. Jesus himself explicitly warns us against mere idle speech in Matthew 12, 36. I tell you, on the day of judgment, Men will render account for every careless, idle word they utter. Now then, I wonder how many people realize this. Gossip is very easy to do. And if you're talking about people, dangerous. So if you are in a group of people and they're talking about somebody, you don't like it, Ask the, just silently ask God, Holy Spirit, do I say something or not? Because you might be able to help. But they don't realize. Just say, we shouldn't talk like this. I don't want to know this. Just be, just be, be free and frank and just say, I don't want to continue this conversation. It's wrong. Okay? Gossip is, is bad. 
Okay, who is next? Yes. Father, um, you have to ask the Holy Spirit first. Yeah. Should I say this? Should I mention this? Or just keep quiet? Yeah. Well, if you are already brave enough to say something, say something. But if you're wondering, say, Holy Spirit, do I mention this or not? Sometimes it will make things worse. See, the problem is this. You say to yourself, should I say something? Now, you're thinking as a human being. And what people are always doing is, they do themselves what they think they ought to do. And I think it's wrong. Because people are praying horizontally. I will say something to this person and put them right. Or a quick prayer to God to say, do I say something or do I leave it to you? And let him do something. So he can do something better than you can. So when it comes to love, forgiveness, okay, I teach forgiveness and love. And you say to me, do I need to tell the person that I have forgiven them? I say no unless God tells you to tell that person. Because if he tells you to tell that person, he will give you the words, and you can say those words with love. Otherwise, you'll spoil things. Because if you say to a person, I've forgiven you, they say, what for? Why? 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 And you make things worse. So, try and pray vertically. Let God do something rather than do something horizontally yourself. This is you as a human being. And this is you as a spiritual being. Say, God, do something. And let him, because he knows best what to do. Okay? Right. From curse to blessing, where are we? From curse to blessing. Is there a way out from under the dark shadow which has been cutting off God's blessing? I can't help you, but I know a man who can. Did you know this phrase? Yeah. Where's it come from? From the Nicholas. From the Yeah, yeah, yeah. Doesn't it? Oh. I know I, I can't do this, but I know a man who can. It's the AA, surely. Anyway, this is, God, this is Jesus. <laughs> Carry on. Yes, there is a way out, but there is only one through the sacrificial death of Jesus on the cross. Isaiah 53, 6. All we, like sheep, have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Now, this is the problem. I know this from my experience. Every single person in this room, including me, wants to be in control. Everything. The human being always wants to be in control, rather than let God do it. And we're going to fail often. 